What we are saying is have a heart. We've got to be able to regenerate our people. The people who are kind, people who are cruel, but that's life. You can be bigger about bigger. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I would like to end by actually looking at the condition of the people with special needs in Singapore. What do you think is, is their future like? And what do you think needs to be done? Can we start with you? I think we could do more by creating, you know, like television, Special Olympic, you know, highlighting all this that get people to accept it. This is the biggest issue. If I've always believed that if everybody do their part, as what she said, the world will be a better place. I think the future should be better than what I see in the mm. past, you know. Uh, but I'm greedy. I want things to be scaled faster. I want to. I want as many people as possible not to be left behind. I I I want them to receive equal access to quality education opportunities, work opportunities, healthcare, transport infrastructure, and I, I want to be a part of the solution. And I truly believe that it takes a village. Yeah, where are it's your government, team? of course. You know, it's families like yeah. us, it's professionals, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the time. volunteers, the rest of the, the Singapore. I, I will admit, I did come. I did feel a lot more encouraged when Denise stepped in. So it wasn't just about Denise, the person. It's mm. it's, it's about how the, 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 the leaders are st starting to yeah. see this. So that for me was promising. Mm. But I think far more important is. I think it augurs well for the rest of us. I think and I hope and I envision a time when our special needs people really become the very inspirations that this country needs. Mm. And I would like to see the, the curriculum um, loosened. Mm. And I would like to see individual education programs for every child who can't work within that curriculum. Mm. Mm. And the other thing I would like to see, which is, I, I know, a huge need, and Lisa made some steps towards trying to ad address this some time ago, I think. There needs to be, I think, in Singapore, some kind of facility for individual, for independent living, mm. for the adult mm. community. Mm. Yeah, good, good, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. And currently, I don't think there's anything like yeah, that plans, here, is there? currently for the elderly disabled, where a block oh. of flats yeah, and they they are, certain are, floors. Are, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, need yeah, it for the intellectually yeah, disabled, yeah, we need it for the physically agreed. disabled. Yeah, agreed, agreed not just for the elderly. I mean, but I have to say, if I, if I may interrupt you, sure. um, when we tried to, to bring this system in um, for young adults, the, most of the parents preferred for the young adults to stay with their maids. <laughs> Instead of... In Singapore or in the States? Yeah, I know, here. And how about you, Lisa? What do you see for the future for the... I work towards educating mainstream teachers. That's something that I have dedicated, um, dedic I've dedicated so that mainstream teachers understand children with special needs, they understand their characteristics, their quirks, their, their, their strengths. And so with understanding comes acceptance. Mm. And Ian? I, I personally am, am quite grateful. I think this country has lots of potential. The people has a lot of potential. I think change only happen with this question, how do we measure success? Mm. Is it going to be the fastest at the cheapest rate? What, what do we constitute as success? I think once we start answering this, this question, are we willing to settle for slightly less, but we have a more inclusive, humane society? Mm comes straight back to your introduction and what the Prime Minister said. That's exactly what you're saying. That the nation needs to be inclusive of everybody and caring for everybody. I have to close this discussion tonight, but if I can just touch on some of the major points. I think education is going to be very important. It is the education of the parent, because some parents don't know how to handle the problem. Um, and it's also the education of the public. As much as it is the training and the coaching of people with special needs, perhaps an even greater problem is the education of the public and how they regard and treat the disabled people. And it is also the education of employers 
to do away with the prejudices that they have and to recognize the commercial benefit that these uh, people, these special people can bring, just as the Singapore Equestrian Centre has been able to do and Dignity Kitchen. And perhaps as they grow old also, there has to be support of uh, certain communities where they can live with dignity uh, to the rest of their days. So in the end, it's a question of recognition. Recognition comes with awareness, and there has to be an awareness of the um, differences that we have in society and an acceptance of people. I think perhaps I I'd like to take a quote from the Disabled People's Association where they said that um, the greatest disability is apathy. Mm. And I would like to add also that perhaps the greatest di disability is apathy and ignorance. Mm. And I think to handle this, we need to, taking uh, Denise's word, recognize that we live in a village. And it is not just the disabled people or just the public or just the employers but it is a community that Singapore yeah. is, and we will all be the beneficiaries of that. Good night.